What's up, Notre Dame fans? Mike Singer from Blue and Gold, uh, recruiting guy, YouTube guy, podcast guy, with our football guy, Tim Hyde. Um, I'm excited about this show. Tim was running around today. He just got home a few minutes ago before we started recording. I was in South Georgia today, seeing some Notre Dame targets. South Georgia, Central Georgia. It wasn't in the Warner Robins making area. I guess that's South Georgia. But so, I mean, yeah, I'm 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 fired up about today's show. I bet we're gonna have a lot of people be like, Mike, make it it's not South Georgia. I, I'm sorry, I did not look at the map to see the exactly, but that's <laughs> it's south of Atlanta. So this is besides the point. Tim, you have a good day, man? Oh, I had a great day. Great day. Beautiful weather in New England. Summer's here, getting ready to get on the boat, enjoy life. So here we go. All right. People don't care about that though. We get a comment on that. Like, we don't care about your lives. Just talk about Notre Dame. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna We'll do it. We'll just talk about Notre Dame. Um yeah, so we're we're gonna be a little heavy on recruiting talk today. Um today's show might go a little bit shorter. Um, uh, but if, if you guys have um you know questions, drop them now. Um we'll get to them throughout the show. Definitely drop a super chat, we'll get to it right away. Um if you're listening back on you or watching back on YouTube, appreciate you guys. Um, hit the thumbs up on this video, subscribe to our channel if you have not yet. And uh, dollar for one year premium access over at blueandgold.com, still the deal of the year. Um, we moved over to the On3 network from Rivals January 1st, and uh, we, that deal is still going on. So make sure you get it um, while it still is um, still going. If you're listening via podcast, appreciate you guys as well. Uh, make sure to leave us a kind review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And uh, we hope you're making we're making your drive to work, um, you know, better. I'm guessing that's what, my, what most people are doing. Listen to podcasts, right? Yep. Early, early, early morning and traffic hour. There you go. So we'll skip the best or, or the thing you're drinking right now. I'm drinking water, Tim. I'm guessing you're just drinking a beer. Um, uh, a little, a little one of those, a little water, getting everything, getting organized here. Yeah, my stomach. I, I had a. I had a lunch that's not making my stomach feel great, so I just I'm drinking water. Best thing you've seen this week is our number one segment. What is the best thing you've seen this week, Tim? Since our last show uh, last Wednesday. Well, the, well, the 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 best thing I thought was the coolest thing because you know Marcus uh, Marcus Freeman kind of mentioned it, at, you know, a couple times during his Chris Zorich interview was, uh, you know, or Chris Zorich mentioned it like because he kept saying head coach and it's like no. I'm the Dick Corbett head football coach. And and here he was, what, a day or two ago, went down and met the man who was uh, funding that name on his door right there. I, I just thought it was awesome. And uh, this goes into Marcus Freeman, you know, that, you know, the NCAA rule head coaches aren't allowed to go see recruits. So Marcus Freeman is going to go visit the guys that are funding the program. And he's crisscrossing the country, going to a ton of alumni, uh, organizations i know you know my wife was one of the the board directors for five years in los angeles he, i know he's going out there here in a couple of weeks so he's crisscrossing the country saying hello to all those that matter behind the scenes i think it's pretty cool i mean it's it's like the guy's uh a glutton for punishment almost it's like man just play some golf you know <laughs> i guess he doesn't want to he, he he was in hilton head south carolina yeah. and i bet part of that's his good buddy bj Payne. Sure. Um, you know, Jalen Sneed's head coach is, you know, is down there. So they, there's a picture of those two on Twitter. Um, but yes, like, man, he, he, he's not allowed to recruit it's during the spring evaluation period. It's just assistant coaches, but the guy just has to be doing something or, you know, I'm sure he loves his kids, but he's got a lot of them and I'm sure he doesn't mind, you know, going down to Tampa and Hilton Head, South Carolina. <laughs> there's worse places yeah. to be. So. He was, uh, yeah, he was doing a live interview on, a, you know, one of the right. Notre Dame channels today on their, you know, uh, talking about Notre Dame. I haven't seen it yet. I just saw a quick little blurb on there. So I'll go back and listen. But no, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's definitely not uh, traveling the world playing golf, unlike some past Notre Dame coaches. Who, Tim? Who, who are you talking about? Well, I mean, one of them was, you know, Mike Goolsby was coached by the famous one, Mr. Tyler. Willingham, and yeah. obviously the the gentleman down there in Baton Rouge is uh, famous for that as well. Yeah. I mean, uh, Marcus Freeman, he gets after it. So, yeah, for maybe some folks who don't really know the, the Dick Corbett, um, you know, who he is, you know, like Tim said, he sponsors 
like why is Margot Freeman the Dick Corbett head football coach? Money. Money is the short answer. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, on the on the screen here on YouTube, you guys can see he's a Notre Dame grad with an MBA from Harvard. That's pretty impressive. Real estate um investor and developer. Um, served as the presidential aide in the John F. Kennedy administration. Wow. Witnessed um uh, the assassination in 60 i mean it's it's that's it's crazy um so dick yeah. corbett quite literally a living legend um so that that's that's um tim's best thing he saw this week for me yeah. oh this is pretty great have you watched this tim no i saw it real quick on twitter because i've been out and about running around and uh i'm yeah i'm dying to hear what uh is is it is it both brothers? Because I know they were there yep. uh, a well, week or two ago doing some stuff for their shows. Yeah, so we're gonna pop this on Notre Dame. If you're watching this, you don't need to, to cancel the show over this. This is Notre Dame's property. I mean, I, I hope they're okay with me playing it on YouTube and and, and for a podcast audience because it's it's pretty awesome. So, is what it is. Here we go. The best teams I played on. Um, our best players practice the hardest every day. They set the example every day. They were sitting uh, in meetings, taking notes, paying attention. Our young players are like, "Holy cow! This is how this is how they do it here, right?" I'm gonna, I'm gonna take notes. I'm gonna pay attention. We got on the practice field full speed. I mean, taking snaps full speed, walkthroughs. Everybody's intense, right? I mean, we're calling audibles like it's a game, and uh, that, that, I mean, to me, that just sets the tone. But I think you know. Talented players that are unselfish and set the example in the building as to what it's going to take to be a Notre Dame football player. I think that's critical. You kind of you got guys that want to do it for your teammates, right? When our first championship, I wanted to win a championship for Michael Strahan. Like that was my goal. He was our leader. He was at every practice. He brought it. You know, he encouraged us. He motivated us. 15 years in the NFL, never won a Super Bowl. He's there, like, you want to go in that final two-minute drive to win a championship for him. But you have that for every player. The second one, you know, hey, I wanted to win a championship for Victor Cruz and Akeem Nix and Mario Manningham. These guys had never won one. Like, you, you want to go out there, you want them to have that feeling. Afterwards, they told they wanted to you know, win one for me, so I have one more than my brother. So, yeah, like, all that you know, comes together. You have a reason, and it's not just its not just about you, right? It's not just about you. You have players that are unselfish. They want to do it for other people because they've seen how hard they work, the commitment, the motivation, everything they've done to, to try to win a championship, and it inspires, and that, that that's contagious. That feeling's contagious. When the whole team has it, they have other people they want to win for, that's when you get great things. So. Yeah, for podcast audience, I don't know if we actually said who that was. Um, obviously, YouTube could see it. That was Peyton Manning at the, at the beginning there and Eli Manning. Um, they were in South Bend shooting something for ESPN+. Plus. Um, but, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Manning yeah. Brothers, I mean, I, they're, they're, they're awesome. Um, especially as a Dolphins fan, um, you know, Eli Manning holds a special place in my heart um, for uh, – you know, beating the Patriots in a couple Super Bowls. So do appreciate him for that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Talking about the, yeah, those Super Bowls, obviously my wife's from Boston and uh, whew, those still, yeah, you can still remember those things, but you know what? Justin Tuck, great Notre Dame player on the, was on the other side getting Super Bowl rings. So that wasn't too bad. Yeah. It's too less for a Michigan guy. So it's always a positive somewhere. <laughs> there you go. Um, so yeah, before we dive into some Notre Dame defensive line recruiting talk, Tim, Um, We had a really cool Twitter space last week. So if you're not familiar with what that is, you basically like we're live on YouTube right now um, and you can go live essentially on Twitter, um, but it's just audio and I can see like who's listening. And we had Derek Hamilton, the father of Kyle Hamilton, just kind of pop on there and he was listening. I saw that he was listening. So I invited him to speak and he was sitting poolside in Dallas and I asked him, why are you in Dallas? And he said, cause it's Cinco de Mayo week. And I was like, I guess when your son is picked number 14 in the NFL draft, you can just go to Dallas for a couple of days and, and hang out by the pool and drink margarita. So he was like, man, when I'm finished with this margarita, I got to go. But, um, um, and, uh, you know, but, but I'll, I'll hang out with you guys before then. So that was pretty cool. So Tim did any thoughts, you know, and, you know, 
you talked a lot about NIL. Um, and then there's been a lot of NIL in the news here lately. So this is something that when we prepared our show, which Tim and I do a lot of preparing for this show, I will say it's uh, hours and hours. I'm joking. It's minutes and minutes. Uh, we just kind of text and I lay out a quick outline and then that's about it. So Tim, what, what was it that you kind of want to talk about with NIL and what Derek Hamilton had to say? Well, I love that, you know, you know, Mr. Hamilton came on and spent what, 10, 15 minutes with us talking about it. Like you said, he spent a, a long period talking about the name image likeness. And, and the one thing I know Notre Dame fans out there, they, you know, they hear about the craziness at so many of these SEC schools and, what's happening in Oregon, Nike, and all that. And they think Notre Dame's not doing nothing. Well, Notre Dame is doing a ton behind the scenes. What Mr. Hamilton came on to say was, Notre Dame is one of the elite of the elite brand names. You know, there's the Cowboys, the Yankees, Notre Dame. I mean, there's, there, I mean, there's some brand names. And when you're at Notre Dame, you're, you know, and, as, and if you're playing and if you're a guy, you're going to get taken care of just like, Obviously, Kyle did and his buddies did with the show, with the podcast they, you know, that they started and did. Isaiah Foskey. I mean, there's a ton of Notre Dame people that they're just they're just not public. You're just not hearing about them, but are being taken care of when it comes on the name, image, likeness and whatnot. So it was a great it was a great interview. If people could go back, uh, listen to it on Twitter. It was, it was, I really enjoyed it because of what's going on, as we know, or of high school guys getting contracts which is not the intent of name image likeness. It's for a college player. It basically what, once you get rolling. So the fact that he broke it down, you know, he didn't get into all the particulars, but he said, Notre Dame is very, very well organized of what's happening behind the scenes. So it's going to be fascinating with all this stuff coming on because Notre Dame's just sitting back. We're taking care of our guys, you guys out there doing all your stuff. You know, it's all going to come, you know, big giant circle eventually here. Yeah. Part of me was like, cause he, when he popped on there, it's not like I had questions prepared for him. I was just kind of, what was draft night like? You know, I just kind of come up with whatever. Um, and and he, he brought up NIL. And um, one question I did want to ask him to be like, how much money did Kyle make in NIL? I would love to know. I'm not going to ask him that. And I didn't. But like, I mean, that's. I mean, we talking like five figures, six figures. I would love to know, but I'm not. That's not in my business, so I'm not going to ask. But yeah, I it keeps know. being reported like those guys did make a chunk. I mean, it's Colin Coward. It's his. It's his right. you know, platform and whatnot. So yeah, I'm sure those guys made you know some hundreds of thousands because it's. Oh, a national you show. think so? Oh God, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Why? Right? Sure, sure. I would not. I would not be surprised. I don't see them getting fifteen thousand. I, I mean, once again, but when people were out there saying it was a, it was a significant amount that these guys were taking care of because this show yeah. is going to keep going. So it's it? going to be. That's what it sounds like. I mean, Kyle's obviously in the NFL. It sounds like the other guys might get on, or is it going to just be the garage? Who's the next batch of Notre Dame guys to move into that house and take it over? That, well, KJ that Wallace. KJ Wallace is gone. He's gone. Exactly. So, but there is some, I, I thought I read that recently where it's going to continue. However, that is with Cam Hart, Radigan, are they going to get two more guys? Who knows? Yeah. So it'll certainly. be fascinating. To see. So, so if you're not able to go back, you'd have to go back last from last Thursday on Twitter to find it. Otherwise, um, Ashton Pollard, who does a fantastic job at blue and gold, she wrote stories based on what um, Mr. Hamilton had to say. And, uh, we also had Sam Pendleton on and um, Chris Zorich, um, who interviewed Freeman, uh, Marcus Freeman, and then just what was it? I think it's tomorrow. Um, has that um, that event where Zorich is going to interview uh, Marcus Freeman? So, um, so the Rockney cool dinner, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the Rockney dinner in Chicago, which is an annual event, and we'll have that same Twitter space tomorrow. I already have two names that I'm pretty excited about. Um, lined up for it and uh tim you're joining me right oh i'll be there i'm looking yeah, forward so this, to it yeah so this you these youtube shows it's, it's tim and i it's i mean we we have a game plan right the variable in these youtube shows in the podcast you know probably like champion questions super chats and bad internet the twitter space is all variables there's no plan like i have some plans like 
questions I might ask some guests, but otherwise, I mean, we might just be like, all right, let's just open it up to Q and a for, and we can invite listeners to ask a question. Like we can kind of do, we can do anything. So, um, so yeah, I think Thursday at five, I think I got a function at six thirty. and Tim, you've got something, um, quarter till. So kick, make sure you kick me off whenever um, you have to go, but all right. A couple comments I wanted to get to. Um, real quick, um, Josh says, I'd like to, um, say thanks for the content and say that Tim is my favorite Notre Dame analyst. His honesty and authentic opinion is great. Thanks again, guys. Well, Josh, I disagree with you. Cheers, Uh, Josh. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm just kidding. I may Um, be my brother in Austin. I got to check. That no super chat, but it, it, it deserved it. And uh, Jeff says, uh, thanks for all the content you guys uh, put out. You do a really great job. Fins up. Yeah. Hey, go dolphins. Um, not feeling great about the dolphins. My, the, the, my neighborhood pest guy um, who comes out and, and, and sprays and you know, he's talking to me, he's a dolphins fan. I'm like, man, I, I gotta go to work. I don't really want to talk about the dolphins. He's all hyped up about Tua. I'm not a Tua guy, but let's get back to Notre Dame. And let's talk Notre Dame football recruiting specifically. Here's the question for you, Tim, because I know you've done some research on this. How does Notre Dame's current four-man defensive line class stack up against some past Irish defensive line classes? So let's take a look first at this defensive Mm -hmm. line class. Four commitments so far. Keon Keeley, number nine player nationally, number one edge, which is, you know, a viper, basically. Brennan Vernon, number 75 player, number 10 defensive lineman on three. Um, a defensive lineman is, is a defensive tackler nose guard. Um, so that's per the on three consensus. Number 75 player nationally, number 10 defensive lineman. Brennan Vernon, 6'5", 280, big time player. Uh, really nice get for the Fighting Irish over Ohio State. Bubakar Traore just committed April 27th, number 117 player nationally, number 15 defensive lineman, and then Devin Houston, uh, number 216 player nationally, number 28 defensive lineman. So Devin Houston, I feel like Tim, in most recruiting classes for the Fighting Irish, he could be like the the number one guy. You know, like if you, I think if if you put him in the 2020 class, he's like his, the same ranked as like Riley Mills, mm-hmm. um, per the on three consensus. So. It's a it's a pretty good group. So, um, what what does your research say about um, you know, th- how good this defensive line class is? Well, by I mean number wise, it's it's obviously elite beyond elite. I mean to say the least. When you got you know because you know this is just the rankings that are now, but you know you got four in the top two ten, you got three in the top you know one ten. You know who's you know they're probably three of those guys will probably be top one hundred when it's all said and done. You know, so when you're looking at it, it's like, what is this, you know, the ultimate standard? I mean, I went back, here you go. I went back all the way back to uh, these bad boys. Nice. I, I dug out I, I dug out the oldies and I went back and was reading, you know, all the uh, the old past classes all back to Holtz. And for for the, podcast audience, t- uh, Tim just held up a old blue and gold illustrated and this magazine. Is, yeah, and this is the 1990 one. 1990 with the rocket on the cover there. And that class is elite beyond elite when you when you take a look at those guys all four guys went in the nfl you know they signed four you had the usa today all america uh, defensive player of the year in oliver gibson uh who was uh, ended up being playing in the nfl fourth nine seasons in the nfl you had jim flanagan who was a linebacker early and then they moved him to d-line third round draft choice played 10 years in the nfl was also a Walter Mann, uh, the NFL Man of the Year one year, which is fascinating. And then you had Brian Hamilton, who was a, a starter. He was USA Today All-American as well. And then you had Bryant Young, who's going into the NFL Hall of Fame. So these are the fo- those are the four D linemen. Obviously, those were the ringleaders on the great 93 team that went 11-1. and one. And you know what? And, but, and you know, j- just real quick, is when is Notre Dame going to claim the 93 title? That's got to be a topic for down the road. If some of these schools claim them, Notre Dame needs to claim 93, but that's another topic. But then you got recently, you got 2011, three guys in the top 40 to it. Aaron Lynch, but Lynch transfers. 
Obviously, Aishak Williams was highly ranked, but he was just always a a guy, you know, yeah. never a dude. And then real quick, you got 2016, which is just a lot of bodies. Four guys got drafted. Dalen Hayes, Khalid Kareem, Julian Ocaro, and you got Odie, uh, you know, was drafted that year. You know, but ranking wise, Dalen Hayes was only in the 60s. The rest of them were high 170s, 200s. I mean, Jameer Jones, who's a free agent, was on that team. He was ranked 949 in the on three consensus. So, you know, those are just some of the ones that are looking. I went with NFL guys, which is 2016. Obviously, the great number class, highly ranked class is 2011. Outside of, you know, Stefan Tuitt, did they really, you know, did they live up to potential, right. you know? And then the 90 class is just, I mean, that's legendary. When you look at those four and the those four, the way they, you know, obviously they, they all played team captains at Notre Dame and three of them played nine plus years in the NFL and you got a Hall of Famer. So, so this class is going to be really, really good when it's all said and done. Yeah, so you're looking at potentially the best Notre Dame defensive yes. line class in 33 years. Um, exactly. Exactly. And I wish Luce it's, Emoji were here to see this thing. Yes. I mean, the YouTube video, Tim, I love you talking Notre Dame history. But <laughs> you ain't Lou, and I'm not Lou. No one is Lou. There's there's only one, uh, there's only one Lou Samoji, and uh, I mean he talks so much about you know that was that was the position that Notre Dame just couldn't, yeah, you know recruit big time at you know the, that position, and now it's you know what would you say that position is now, Tim? Like that, I mean for a while it's defensive line Notre Dame just could not get those big time guys, that's not the case anymore. Could you say quarterback? Could you say running back, receiver, cornerback? I feel like it's got to be one of those, right? It's, I mean, when you're going number wise, when you're going recruiting numbers, you're going, you know, the on three, you're going consensus and you go back over this. I mean, it's corner. I mean, corner is the, is Lou Samogio used to call the DN, you know, the, you know, you know, the, you know, the great white well that they couldn't get it's, it's corner. It's an elite yeah. corner that Notre Dame has not signed those in a long time. They've had some good ones. They've had some guys in the pros, but they've all been in the three hundreds, the high twos, you know, that when's the last stuff. time Notre Dame got a top hundred corner. Off top of my head, I would say a guy who lasted 30 days on campus, T Shepard. Uh, was that 20, uh, was he on the 2011, 2012? I mean, if you, note? if you just kind of want to ramble here, Tim, I can, I can look it up. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, T Shepard was, I, I mean, he was premier, one of the premier cor- corners in America, but he got to Notre Dame and he, uh, some academic issues with his transcripts and whatnot. And he was gone within 30, within 30 days. You know, before that, you had, you know, Gary Gray, who was a, you know, national All-American and poor, poor Gary, you know, he's, he's uh, famous for uh, the two, the 2011 Michigan game. Let me read you the 2020 cornerback class. This is per the on three consensus, which equally weighs on three 24 seven rivals and ESPN. Caleb Offord, 483 nationally and 38 corner. Ramon Henderson, 671 and 59 player at his position. Clarence Lewis, 729 nationally, 66 corner. Now, Clarence has obviously outplayed that ranking. Like, I, I, I'm – and Ramon Henderson too. Sure. Um, Ramon Henderson's a really good player, I think. Lewis look – Cam, Look at Cam Hart's numbers. I think he was 800s. And yeah, I mean, Cam Hart's exceeded expectations, but again, yes. not not that big time guy. I mean, I think so far, I think Jaden Mickey might be the. Oh, uh, Isaiah Rutherford, he didn't pan out. He was number one hundred sixty three player. Yes, Cam Hart six sixteen. Yep. Um, but all right, we're, we're, I'm I'm sorry, I interrupted you, Tim. You may continue while I. Keep looking. No, no, no. Yeah. And one of the guys in the call. Yeah. Yeah. Gary Gray. I think I said Gary Gary. Well, the way he played against Michigan, he was Gary Gary. Yeah. 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 Definitely Gary Gray, who was a five star, you know, elite corner that came to Notre Dame. But uh, it's that is the one position. Quarterback, you know what? They, I mean, they've had some elite 11 guys. You know, Drew Pine was elite 11. Fine. You know, Buckner. The league's year. They had, you know, um, yeah. 
Wimbush, I mean, Wimbush, people forget, was in the top 50 in the country. Highly, highly, you know, re recruited quarterback. You know, Kaiser was a really good football player, obviously. So, you know, it, it's been recently with Brendan Clark, who hasn't obviously panned out. You got, um, you know, obviously Angeli with his low ranking when you're going ranking wise last year. You keep, and then you uh, keep Ian Book was a three star. Mouth. I know, I know. And then obviously Ian Book who they plucked away last second from Washington state. So yeah, they haven't gotten the elite elite, but they, you know, they've had a fair share of really high end four stars. So as I'm looking, I'm looking at, what am I now on the 2016 class? Houston yeah. Griffith is listed as a corner. He, he, but so he was a top hundred player, but he, I don't think he was, was he even recruited as a corner? He played a little early. It was more of a nickel. Yeah, I'm not counting early. him. No. So part of this, is an indictment on Notre Dame and then a little bit on the recruiting star rankings. Dante Vaughn, 310, Troy Pride, 351, Julian Love, 427. Those, you know, the guy. what's Dante Vaughn doing? Is he in the NFL? I, I, I don't remember what Dante Free agent. Was. I believe he's a career. I know he's been bouncing around as a free agent, so he's still getting a contract but off. Julian Obviously, Love, Pride and and Love. Love and Pride, I think, were just in Ooh. South Bend for the Blue Gold game. There, there. Um, I mean, I want to say I was I was interviewing Caleb Downs. I'll have the crack staff look this up. Caleb Downs was telling me that he talked to those two guys specifically. Uh, where is it here in my in my article? Julian Love and Jalen Elliott. Uh, so um, that's that's who he was talking to. But um, yeah, yeah, Love uh, is one of those those you know low end prospects at Notre. I mean, he got developed at Notre Dame and played his tail off. He. Yeah, he's a heck of a football player at Notre Dame. I, me personally, I think he got robbed his junior year when he didn't win the Jim Thorpe. And obviously, once he got out, the the mess of the Clemson Final Four game just went away when Dante Vaughn couldn't cover those Clemson freaks because, yeah. you know, Julian Love was playing his tail off be before that. All right, update. <laughs> unless I'm like – I'm I'm sorting by cornerback position, so unless like on three had a – safe uh, guy listed at safety and they're actually a corner because i'm just kind of scrolling through this quickly sean crawford number 136 player nationally 17 cornerback mm -hmm. that's 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 better um for, for, and we're just looking at rankings you know they're yeah. obviously not the the be all end all but um this is i mean this is troubling <laughs> i mean it's no, and, it, it, and it was like yeah it was like that you know it was like that the high you know high end corner corner during this you know the kelly era they did not go out and get a bunch of Big time dude. They tried. Someone just wrote in the comments here. They had, yeah, Ronald Darby, who's been in the NFL for a long time, decommit last second, went to Florida State. So, you know, they they were always on some guys, but got can Cole, never... Cole Luke one twenty eight. Um, he was solid. Devonte Neal, number fifty player nationally, number two cornerback. But he was always a uh, a skill guy, a return guy. You know, he uh, he came to Notre Dame to play slot, and then you know transferred very to early to Arizona. Yeah, you know, so fast, he, fast player. But you know, he yeah, when he came to Notre Dame, he was going to play offense. He caught one pass, had one carry, returned twenty one punts for forty six yards, thirteen games, just one season yep. at Notre Dame. So uh, I guess there you have it. I I want to keep going back to be honest with oh, you. Oh no, it's fascinating. I've done it. I actually have a whole list. I've gone back. You start going down the rabbit hole, and because I'm always thinking of you know what you know Lou, you know Samoji always used to talk about the D line. D line's kind of correct. It's still not great. I mean, there's a couple classes. You know, I know you know Mike Elson gets a lot of credit, and he does. But there are some classes that had some low end project type guys, and I think that's why they're trying to get five in this class this year to make up for some of those guys that. You know, haven't really pan like Devin Apu transferred. Will Schweitzer is playing more linebacker now right. than DN, who is recruited. So, and did, obviously, the, the interior they just really haven't loaded up interior wise lately. I don't know. I don't know how we got on the defensive line. Did you say T. Shepard earlier for a highly ranked guy? So yeah. here I, I'm looking at his on three page. Yeah, uh, he's been all over the place. Yeah, it's uh. Did did these guys not? Okay, so he was a four star at Rivals outside the. And, oh, uh, he was way higher than that. They must have taken something. No, must have happened. I mean, he was top. He was ninety at. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, that'll be interesting. That, well, well, I mean, I'm yeah. not making this up. This is no, no. I hear you. Page. I hear. I remember. I remember then, seeing that as well. But uh, uh, 
you know, the old timers out this there, they, they all know. Ranking, so I don't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, they know who T Shepard is. There's, I mean, they know T because when he committed out of Fred, that started the, we always get on the loose emoji, you know, board and, you know, Fresno. everyone always puts, talks about Fresno recruiting. And he was the one that started that Fresno roller coaster of Notre Dame going into Fresno during those early Brian Kelly years and striking out on everybody. And they, I mean, it, it seemed like every time there was a recruiting update on blue and gold, it would always be Fresno, Fresno, and they just didn't get anybody out of there. Man, I, the I am money they spent. I knew <laughs> cornerback recruiting wasn't great, but that was that was a little troubling. I'm not going to lie. Um, well, that's going now into obviously you know we you, you know now now you're going down the rabbit hole. Even this year, they got to get these Christian Gray. They lost Rhett. You know, it's like what's the backup plans now? It's because they're going to you know that goes back to the class you just talked about: Tucker's, Riley Barnes. I thought they were outstanding in the spring game, showed really good athleticism, really good football players, but they were bottom, bottom of those rankings are so low. It's, it's, it's amazing how low they are. Yeah. I think Benjamin Morrison, who Notre Dame signed the 2022 mm-hmm. class, I think he's got the, a chance to be pretty good. Um, and um, Jaden Mickey is already, I mean, he's, he's a lot, I mean, Notre Dame signed him like they think he's a really good player but he's better than they thought, um, which is, which is saying something. So this well, was two good, not- you know, just real quick. I mean, those are two really good freshmen that are coming from two high end, high end high school football programs as well. So they're going to come to know like Mickey people, if they don't know Corona Centennial, you know, is probably the top easily in the top three public schools in all the state of California. And oh, oh God. Yeah. Corona Centennial of public schools. Oh, public okay. Schools. Okay. Yeah, when it comes, yeah, I believe it because the privates rule California, but when it comes to publics, Corona Centennial, you know, so, is way. I mean, they're the last one to win the state yeah, title. Bro, bro free, bro, bro free prep. One, bro free prep, where Benjamin Morrison comes from in Arizona, yeah, they, they they've been down a little bit recently. Yeah. but you know, the it's number public. three team in per max preps was last year. It's Bergen Catholic, oh, Bergen where Catholic. Notre Dame signed Jaden Bellamy, um, Bellamy, a corner that I'm I'm corner DB. Just call him a DB prospect. I'm really yep. high on the Notre Dame sign. So um, talk about good high schools. All right. Yes. So this was not on the the docket for today at all. But um, it's, it's, it's a fun conversation. Man, Definitely. No kid. So how did we even get here? Oh, talking about the the, the D line classes. Yeah. Well, you asked about what's the position right. like that's hitting the D line of the the last 25 years. Yeah. And it's so, DB. Yeah. So. It's, you know, it's it's not D line anymore. So let's. I think I've got film for each guy popped up, okay. um, ready to roll. So YouTube YouTube audience, this, this is gonna be a treat for you guys. Um, so we'll start with. And I want to go through each, and then we'll talk about Jason Moore at the end because I mean Notre Dame will play. Let's just say they got a four man front. Um, you know where do each of these guys fit in? So we'll start with Keon Keeley. Um, I mean, this one's got to be pretty easy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Looks like Javon Curse already, right? It's uh, uh yeah. Tall, lean. He's a athletic, Viper. Athletic. Just Viper. Yeah, Viper playing that, you know, basically the, the, the rush end, the weak side edge rusher. He's uh look at that. Yeah. He's everything, you know, and um, if <laughs> go on, go on uh, YouTube, wherever you do it. And just, I mean, just watch his, his game against Arch Manning's team, Cardinal Newman last year, where he just, he's a man child out there. So, and uh, you know what? People forget he was not even ranked. You were right. Going into his junior year. He's one of those risers. All of a sudden people started to get film on him. and like, who is, who is this guy? And he has really blown up here those last, what, 15 months or so. And uh, outstanding football player. He's going to be one of those guys that's going to be needed early at Notre Dame because obviously you lose, you know, Adam Iola and, and Isaiah Foskey, their two main rush ends. So instant playing time is going to be needed that position. Yeah, I mean, he's he's perfect for Notre Dame. I remember when Notre Dame offered him for Pot of Gold Day last year, St. Patrick's Day, that. and he's such a nice, polite kid and, you know, comes from a great um, family, a great program. Um you know, in high school, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a great fit. So I, I feel let pretty good. Yeah. Let him team? roam. 
No, I was going to say, just let him roam, especially as a freshman. Let him go out there, kind of like what Aaron Lynch did back in 2011, where they just played him a ton and just make mistakes, but play, get it. And just his, his, if he plays with the motor like this, which obviously we're all expecting, and if that's the level he wants to get at, uh, Keon does. So I would expect him to just be, you know, a maniac out there immediately. Not that he's going to be an All-American as a freshman, but just to play his tail off. Because it, it's right there for him, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And then a guy who kind of gets forgotten about a little bit is Brennan Vernon. He's not much of a social media guy. He, I think the last camp he went to is film we're going to watch here in a moment when I, I got to see him last spring. I mean, I think on Huddle, there's like, he's got like maybe a minute. 45 seconds of, of, of his junior season on huddle. I mean, he, he keeps to himself, um, yeah. but I'll tell you what he does love in it's Notre Dame. I mean, I, I mean, every one of their brother thought he was going to Ohio state. And I just kept hearing like, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Like he really likes Notre Dame and I don't think he's a great, you know, I don't think like Ohio state's for him. It's not for everybody. Um, so yeah, I mean, I just would not forget about this kid because uh, I think he's going to be a big time player for Notre Dame. And you got to remember this, this film here is before his junior year. So this is, you know, him as a sophomore. Yeah. I think, yeah. I I mean, I know you've said it best in a couple of videos every time, uh, you know, every time he shows up on a picture or visits Notre Dame, he's gained five pounds. So he's, he he just keeps getting larger and larger. And it's just going to be another one of those, high motor, high energy guys. It's all these hybrids, you know, starting really with him. Keon's a true edge weak side guy. The rest of these guys could, could play anywhere along the line. It, it's really going to be how big are they? Where do they fit best? Are they a B gap player, an A gap player, a C gap player? You know, are they going to play on the tight end versus some of these teams? So, and you know, it's funny you mentioned his, his, you know, Twitter and, Instagram or whatever he like he's not he's kind of like this year's Joey Tonona right I mean Joey everyone forgot about until he signed they're like oh yeah well well we have Joey let's go watch his film same with Vernon you know he committed so long ago he's kind of like the forgotten guy yet he's you know he's a dude he's a dude he's a high end dude if he was not committed now you would see updates on him every twenty four hours it's you know no, you wouldn't. He, because schools would be on him. <laughs> oh yeah, schools would be on him. Would be but... on him. I mean, if he, if he was not committed as of yet, he would be. He would not be blowing up, but the schools would be blowing up his. Oh high school. okay. Yeah, but he's happy. He's he got Notre Dame. He committed really early, which is, as you know, was a it was a big shock, I think, to to the nation. And he stuck to it. He's not talking to anybody. He's Notre Dame. He's how many times has he been on campus? It seems like ten times. You know, it's like who's who's been there more? Him or uh, Drake Bowen? You know, I think they're arm wrestling to see who gets to Notre Dame more often. Uh, it's definitely Bowen, but um, okay. <laughs> yeah, eight, uh, Vernon gets to to South Bend as much as he can. So yeah, he. Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, I got the opportunity to spend some time with him last fall, and that was my second time interviewing him, and I haven't been able to talk to him since. And he's just he keeps to himself, and I respect that. And I had such a fun time talking to him, and um, did a really cool story um, for Blue and Gold in our magazine on Brendan Vernon. Um, about like how he and Marcus Freeman bonded over Van's shoes Vans. and how Marcus Freeman bought the whole coaching staff a pair of Vans to wear when Brendan Vernon visited campus. Like um, just just really, really cool stuff. Yeah. So Brendan Vernon. Um, that's recruiting. That's recruiting there, Mike. When you, you know, when you wrote that story and all that's, that's recruiting. Find out what, you know, what the guy you want likes. Show him, show him a little bit of love. It goes a long way. And uh, yeah, that was pretty awesome. That picture and uh, so, all those guys in bands. So that film we just watched, that's Vernon probably at like 250. Now he's up to <laughs> like 280, 285. I mean, you think he's, I, I mean, do you, I, I personally don't see strong side end in his future. I think he's a, a three technique. And am I crazy to say you could be, if, I mean, if he, if he, he gets like the 295, what did Kurt Heinish, what was Kurt Heinish? Like 300 pounds? It, yeah, three hundred pounds with that gut, he had to be about three hundred. Yeah, the, you know, perfect so timing. Right? Heinish is about you know six one six two. Vernon, you know six five. But so if he, if he gets up to like three hundred or, or two ninety five, three hundred, like 
and he's a like a lean, powerful. I mean, I think he could, you know, be three tech and then slide into one at times and and, and pass rushing downs and just be a freaking beast. Yes. Um, uh, when he, I agree, that's why you know we you know we've talked where there are a bunch of these guys. It's going to just be like where you know where do they fit? What is the best for them? Because they're all elite football players, and you got to find their best position. Kind of like, you know, what hands in the ground do they like best? Left, right, you know, whatever it is. And find that spot for these guys. and Because uh, they're going to be needed early. They really are going to be needed early. Yeah. Not so, as starters, but depth and get some minutes early as freshmen. Yeah. I remember talking to a source um, close to Notre Dame football program after Vernon camped at Notre Dame for Irish Invasion. Didn't need to. He just wanted to work out with Coach Elston. And, you know, my, my sources were like, yeah, this kid's a first-round pick. Like they, like Notre Dame folks absolutely loved him, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if Vernon like wants to go camp again at, at Notre Dame this summer just so we can work out with Coach Washington. Like he's that yeah. kind of kid. Um, so pretty awesome. All right, moving along. Uh, Bubakar Traore from uh, Catholic Memorial. You're gonna have to go watch him play. Uh, oh, it's most definitely. Um, great and high school. Dame's great high school. Great teammate. schedule that they play. Really good football that league that he's in. So we'll we'll watch some of his tape here. Uh, Bubakar Traore, not a ton on him. This is a mix of junior and, and sophomore tape, but um, yeah, I mean we we we've talked about him and Devin Houston um a good bit here recently with their commitments, but um, yeah, another big time guy, Tim. You know what? He is like, I mean, now he is the prototypical like just true strong side end. I mean, you know, he's like an old school guy versus a tight end where you play inside eye on the tight end, the, the seven tech, and just you're playing inside the tight end and reading that offensive tackle, playing that C gap. He, he fits that mold. You don't see a lot of tight ends these days. They're mostly hip and motion wing type guys, but uh, he's a perfect wide side DN with that length, change of direction. He has great motor. And, you know, the best thing, you know, I've talked about him is just his, the way he strikes. He's so well coached at high school. He just strikes with his hands and it's already in his you know bloodlines to do that. So when he comes to Notre Dame, it's not going to be an issue teaching guys to play with hands, shit, you know, shaking off guys. He's he's a the perfect, perfect C gap football player. He's yeah, he's he's got a lot of nice abilities. His his uh tight end film as well. There's some full games on YouTube I've watched, and he plays a lot of tight end. That guy could block as well. Yeah, Tim's got enough. Tim, I don't know how you are watching full games of high school players. I don't even have time for that. And you got a new. Well, I'm not. Player. Yeah, I'm not watching the whole thing and commercials and all that. You fast forward to watch him play. You know, I'm not worried about the what the other guys are doing. Just sit there and break <laughs> him down. For that. And plus, yeah. plus his high school. Who's his? Who's his right tackle? Gerby. You know. Gerby Lambert. Exactly one of the premier offensive target. tackles. Exactly. So I've. That's what really got me excited was to watch some of him as well. So good football player. But he's saw I mean he's another one of those guys. He's he's definitely a top one hundred football player. He's he's a high end defensive lineman. And then uh, Notre Dame's most recent commitment here, um, uh, Devin Houston. Um, he's from Canada. Um, plays his high school ball at St James School in Hagerstown, Maryland. This past August, I mean he he enrolled at St James School. This is his first year playing American football, and. Um, had a, a a pretty good showing. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good get here for Notre Dame, beating out old uh, Mike Elston in Michigan. Yeah, and you know, and a young guy, young guy when it comes to playing. So he's still a you know a raw piece of clay to get molded and developed into you know whatever it is down the road. Which you know, my thing is you know, just his size. He's already got big shoulders and you know big thick legs already to be that hold some extra weight and be a I mean, there's no reason why this guy's not a 300 pound interior football player, an A gap, B gap player. You know, everyone wants to play DN. Everybody does. That's doesn't matter if you're coaching Pop Warner, eight year olds, they all want to be the speed rusher. But uh, yeah, this guy wants to be an All American, make some money down the road in the NFL. He's he's definitely an inside guy. You know, when you look at him, you know, and you put these four together, you're looking at some dudes in high school that you know, Alabama, Georgia. Clemson D line a few years ago. Obviously, this year they're going to be stacked as well. That these are the lines that they've put together where a bunch of highly ranked guys come together and play their tails off. And 
sacrifice for each other, which the Mannings talked about in that little video we showed earlier, guys doing things for the betterment of the team, which helps them out in the long run. And Houston, you know, Bubakar, these are, these are some unbelievable guys. I think can play multiple positions. Yeah, absolutely. So I will uh, pull up Tim's. I mean, Tim, you have a lot of favorite players in the class. Um, I will say that, you know, whether it's Absher, Love Absher, oh, Freeling, Oak and Lola, um, Jason Moore is one of them. Yeah, he's he's I yeah he's he's my top three. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, he he really is. I just you know when it when it comes to needs because I just think number one he's coming from Demath the Catholic, and I think that is awesome to go in there and get a and get a player from there. It's been a long long time uh, you know since they've got a player from Demath the Catholic. You know. You know, my wife went to Notre Dame. She went to, you know, John Day Owens is from there. She was good friends with him during, it was a tight end for Notre Dame uh, back then. But uh, he's another one of these guys. It's like, where is he going to fit in? And I think it's anywhere he wants. I really do. I Five tech, can you move him inside? He's, you know, I know he's always getting the, you know, the Kelly Kareem, Isaac Rochelle, he's better than those guys when they came, when they came to Notre Dame, obviously they're in the NFL and, you know, Rochelle's still moving around and Kareem's playing as well, but he is everything. I mean, there's another strong side end, you know, if they do a four man nickel front, is it, you know, Keeley and Moore as, as the two bookends, which would be unbelievable. He reminds me, you know, when I watch him, he reminds me of the old school Nebraska you know, with Grant Wistrom and Tomich and those guys and the great Florida State that just had an All-American DN every year. He just looks like those guys that played in the 90s and the early 2000s at Florida State were long, lean, and all about get off, play with your hands, and an attitude. So he's, he really, I mean, he's, he's in my top three of total football players. I, I would love to see Notre Dame sign this year. So Notre Dame's got those four commitments. We're assuming they hold on to all of them. Keeley, Vern, and Houston. Um, and Traore, and it's like, man, that 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 quartet is fantastic. If they add Jason Moore, yeah, I mean, he's so good that I could listen to an argument that, like, is he the best of this group? You know, like, yeah. they're all, they're, you know, they all have similarities, especially you know the 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 four that does not include Keeley because they all have these, you know, they can play inside outside, they can kind of do all these different things, but like the. You know, uh, so it, it can be tough to compare apples with oranges a little bit because they are do have some you know differences. But I mean, pound for pound, Jason Moore. I mean, yeah. he's. Uh, I mean that. My point is, you have a one of the. I mean, arguably Notre Dame's best defensive line class in thirty years, and then you could add the cherry on top being the best. I mean, that's that's my point here, which is crazy. Yes. Um. So that there gives you. Go. you- that, I mean, that gives you, if, if he comes, I know, you know, is, is he coming for the big June weekend? Do you know yet? Is, is that official? It is. Okay. So there you go. He's going to be for, what is that? Ninth, 10th, whatever that, that, that weekend is where they got, you know, everyone coming in. Correct. It's going to be a big one. It's going to be a big one. And that's the the big showcase. I know he wasn't able to get there during, you know, the spring and whatnot. And um, he's, he's just super talented. He's, is he a C gap player? Is he, you know, there's so many things you could do with this guy and it allows Al Golden, who's been in the NFL for a long time, picking brains and seeing what works. You start taking these guys and I've heard Golden and especially Marcus Freeman talking about where it sounds like their defense, they're not really going to be just a, a four, three, a four, two, whatever it is. It's a situational D they're going to focus on situations, analytics, and they're going to really get into those, type of players they could play all over the place. And uh, I love Jason Moore and knock on wood. He comes cause that, yeah, you're right. That'd be the cherry on top because he, he's elite. He's an elite football player. Well, I apologize folks for kind of just abruptly ending the show, but I promised him to get him out. It's six fifty Eastern time. My, my oh, clock right. just shows that it, it turns. So uh, we're going to sign off now. I do appreciate you guys um, hanging out with us live on YouTube. I uh, appreciate you guys watching back, listening uh, on podcast, make sure you go to blueandgold.com dollar for one year premium access. Um, I think next Wednesday I'm going to be at a high school game, a spring game here in the, in the Atlanta area. So Tim, we won't have a, 
a live show next Wednesday, but Twitter space Thursday. I'm also going to hope to get it on podcast version as well. I wanted to last week, but wasn't able to. It's a pain in the butt to be able to get the audio. So I'm going to plan on, uh, on, on hoping to publish the Thursday Twitter space uh, on our podcast feed. Um, so you guys can listen to that. But yeah, blue and gold, dollar for a year. Catch you next time, guys.